Hello all, this is Dr. Alsip, and in this video we will be discussing the six main types of synovial joints. And during this discussion of the types, we will talk about what movements are possible at each joint and examples of each. So as I mentioned at the beginning, there are going to be six main types of synovial joints, and these are typically uh, divided into these types by the shape of their articulating bony surfaces. And that shape will really greatly affect what types of actions are possible at each. So let's start with the ball and socket joint um, because it's kind of my favorite. So I, I like to start with my favorites. These joints consist of a ball-like um, surface often called a head, fitting into a socket or a cup-like surface. And these types of joints, uh, this type of joint is capable of all the movements we describe as possible at a synovial joint. So this includes flexion and extension, abduction and adduction, which means it can also circumduct if it can do those four, and as well as medial and lateral rotation. So the most freely movable of the synovial joints. The two main ball and socket joints are the glenohumeral or the shoulder joint as well as the hip joint. All right, let's continue clockwise on this image with our next stop being at the conduloid, sometimes referred to as ellipsoid or ellipsoidal joints. Now in conduloid joints, you have two relatively oval shaped projections and depressions uh, fitting together. And these joints are capable of movements in two planes, so often referred to as biaxial. These joints are capable of flexion and extension, as well as abduction and adduction, and, when this, and with this complex of movements, uh, that also can lead to circumduction. You can find an example of a conduloid joint at the radiocarpal joint, uh, which sometimes is referred to as the wrist joint. This will be between the radius and the proximal row of the carpal bones. So this one right here uh, would be the radiocarpal joint, and that is a conjuloid joint. Um, I lied, and, I, and I'm actually not going to go exactly clockwise because I want to skip to the saddle joint uh, that because it's actually pretty similar to the conjuloid joint in terms of the type of movements allowed. Um, but the saddle joint will have a bit uh, greater range of motion. Uh, one of the articular surfaces in a saddle joint will be, as its name suggests, saddle shaped. And uh, the other bone will fit into that saddle shaped bone. And the first, um, the first carpometacarpal joint is going to be an example, and it's hard to see that here, um, but this is going to be an example of a saddle joint. In fact, it's one of the only examples of a saddle joint. All right, circling back to the plane joint, the articulating surfaces of the plane joint are pretty flat, maybe a little bit of concavity or uh, convexity, but for the most part, think flat. And these bones will mainly uh, or these surfaces will mainly just glide over one another, kind of side to side or back and forth, but bo and bones may rotate against one another. Uh, there are actually quite a few plane joints throughout the body, and while they often don't produce big movements, they can help facilitate bigger movements at other joints. So the joints uh, between many of the tarsal bones are um, going to be plane joints, uh, as well as between many of the wrist joint or the carpal bones, so the the joints between each one of those uh, individual carpal bones, the acromioclavicular joint or your AC joint is another example of a plane joint, and that particular plane joint and those small movements that occur there can really help better facilitate the movements at the ball and socket joint to have those more, those bigger, more almost more explosive movements that can occur at this pretty, uh, um, this pretty uh, freely movable ball and socket shoulder joint. Okay, hinge joints are some of the more intuitive joints and are relatively simple in terms of actions allowed. Um, this will allow flexion and extension. All right, so it could either be kind of that way 
or that way in terms of the movements. Um, it's really only occurring in one plane, uh, so these can be called uniaxial. The elbow joint is a great example of a hinge joint. The knee joint is actually a modified, um, don't put that fibula in there, it's a little too wide. So the knee joint is actually a modified hinge joint. And lastly, pivot joints, um, this will be the six, so I kind of miss, forgot to keep numbering them. So the pivot joint is, will be our sixth uh, synovial or type of synovial joint and will have a rounded or pointed um, articular surface articulating with a more ring-like other articular surface or ring-like bone. And these are uniaxial as well because you only have movement or rotation around a bone's own longitudinal axis. So the atlantoaxial joint, uh, which is located between um, the first cervical vertebrae and the second cervical vertebrae around this region here, this is an excellent example of a pivot joint. So this is that joint that allows us to shake our head no. All right, question time, my favorite time. The elbow joint is only capable of flexion and extension. What is the synovial joint type of this joint? Ooh, I like to say joint in this question stem. All right, so what in this stem will help you answer this question? Well, what's kind of, you know, kind of jutting out to me right from the get-go is elbow joint and only capable of flexion and extension. All right, so those are kind of the two main clues or what will help, I think, most in answering this question. And really only one of these answer choices matches these two descriptors here, which is what? Yes, C, hinge joint. Very good, very good. For each individual joint we discuss in upcoming videos, we will talk about what type of joint it is. So review here, but keep in mind we will discuss again uh, for sure these different types of joints. Thank you for your time and attention here and have a great day.